This is my island Anigata. I think it is one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean. I am Angelina. We live with another island dweller who is unique to us. They had a home here a long time before people came, but now there aren't many of them left. The Anigata rock iguana is the most endangered lizard in the world. That's Mikey and Kelly. Mikey works for the National Parks Trust as a warden. He looks after the iguanas. And that's Kelly from Fourth Ward Zoo. She comes to the island three or four times a year. We call her the iguana girl. You know, I started working with this species about 16 years ago. And I had no idea we'd still be here fighting the fight. You 16 years, I'm 13 years. Exactly. <laughs> We gotta figure out, you know, what the problem is. And that's the major issue right now. I just really love Anagata Rocky Wanda Skelly. I do too, Mikey. You know, when I was a little kid, I absolutely adored dinosaurs. So fascinated. Mm -hmm. I'd see a really big lizard like this. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh my god, those are the dinosaurs. So when I got the opportunity to come here and work mm -hmm. with this species, I totally jumped on it. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you because they're unique, they're endangered, and they're only found here. Right. There's only about 200 left when we started this program mm -hmm. about 16 years ago. I just can't believe how big they are. It's so awesome. Some people was wondering, like, asking me, like, why are iguanas so important to the island? Especially when they want to build businesses and stuff like that, or homes on the land. So, the great thing about reptiles is they swallow their food whole. Mm -hmm. And as they're walking around, they go to the bathroom and mm -hmm. they're defecating seeds and they're spreading their seeds all over the place. That's why we kind of call them the farmers of the forest. And when you have iguanas spreading seeds, you have a healthy forest. Mm -hmm. And certain plants are almost dependent on passing through an iguana gut to have really good germination rates. The goats and cattle were brought in together in the 1800s. So it's not native to here. They're making a problem because it's eating up all the iguana's vegetation. It, it grows back years and years and years later. Mikey and Kelly monitor the iguana's habitat to make sure it is safe. Rock iguanas lay anywhere from nine to 15 eggs, but only once a year but she's also threatened by the potential invasion of another iguana that doesn't even belong in the British Virgin Islands. Green iguanas can lay up to 80 eggs, but then they can also do it almost three times a year. So basically they just flood the habitat with green iguana babies. Now we have to remove all the other species of iguanas that come to the island. Absolutely. Let's see what we got here. Oh man, I Whoa. mean, see what I mean? It's not just a possible invasion by green iguanas. They have so many f threats they're already facing here on island. Yeah, they're so small, there's no protection for them. Look at this, cats, goats, this is just ridiculous. That's why we've got to put them through the Head Start program. We've got to give them a hand, mm -hmm. get them over that vulnerable size. And if we don't do it, then they're going to get completely wiped off the face of the earth. They're going to go all the way extinct. All right, let's pack this up. You know, the guanas have basic needs. They need good nesting habitat, and they need an environment without introduced predators. And that starts the day that they're born. The little hatchlings, they actually dig a straight chimney out of the nest chamber and they go through the top of the nest. 
so they can reach the open air. Yeah, this is the juvenile that we caught. And I'm gonna put them in a cage right now. And I'm gonna give them some water, fruits, vegetables, and a little bit of protein. They ate them in the process of growing. This is basically a school for the iguanas. They are very extinctive and they do not need to be taught much. While they're in here, they learn how to climb and fend for themselves. They also use their tongue to detect other iguanas in the area and other predators. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Mikey. What's up? I was looking at these cages. They look really rough. What happened? Well, as soon as we got the iguana count up to 120. Right? Hurricane Irma came. Well, when I came here the morning after, this cage was through that fence. Exactly through that fence. On its upside. Were there animals in there? Yeah, four iguanas in there. Just holding on. Four of them. You know, I have to say, when we were in Fort Worth and we were watching this storm come in on that internet and looking at the radar, I was just thinking to myself, oh my God, there's no way they're gonna make it. I honestly thought we were gonna have to start over from scratch. Me all too. new cages, all new animals. I know what you mean, because on my way here from the home, right? I saw poles on the ground, trees, animals, everything you can think of was on the road, on the way here. But when I hit that corner and I saw everything together, I was so happy. So happy. You know, and what was the hardest part from being in Fort Worth and not being able, is that there was no communication. Like we couldn't get any word out Nobody. whether you were Nobody okay, whether your animals okay. When you told me the story about how the people, the, the residents here kind of chipped in and mm -hmm. helped get y'all food because there wasn't any vegetation left to even feed these guys, mm -hmm. you know, it that was really heartwarming. And it made me feel like there was a real sense of community around protecting and helping the iguana survive. It was, everybody came together and helped. All the iguanas survived, so. Right. We won. <laughs> iguanas versus Irma. Yeah, we won. Yeah, this is my tribute to the Virgin Islands. We call this home. Yeah, yeah. The people all come together to celebrate the iguanas. We are really lucky to have our own special iguanas. So we have to give them somewhere safe to live where they can be protected. These are our iguanas. We are their keepers and are responsible for their future. Every single person can play a part. My family, friends, and the whole community of the British Virgin Islands. The rock iguana can be saved. Will you help? <laughs>